911, what is your emergency? Crisis Response Leader Training, CRLT, provides you with a training tool to help with critical problem solving skills needed to be better prepared for and to respond to a major incident. There are numerous features and capabilities within the 3D tabletop simulation that make it an ideal solution for nearly any client, regardless if you are a first responder agency, school, corporation, nonprofit business, or a house of worship. Let's start with a brief look at why CRLT designed our unique solution the way we have. Our leaders, particularly in incident management roles, including our community leaders that are not first responders, have a very steep learning curve for the introductory course through certification process for something like understanding the incident command system or the national incident management system, especially for best practices and critical problem solving skills. While some experts argue that a steep learning curve is a good thing because it shows the mastery of new knowledge that's required to perform a skill, CRLT suggests that it's only a good thing if there is continuous professional development and training. Studies presented as far back as the late 1800s indicate that our ability to recall information after 31 days is significantly diminished. We will lose anywhere from 70 to 90% of what was taught. What is CRLT seeing happen particularly at our smaller departments, which make up the vast majority of departments and organizations across the U.S.? An initial foundational certification process that is not followed up on after returning back to work. And with the forgetting curve also being very sharp in its drop-off, we see a misinterpretation or filtering down of information throughout an organization to the point that best practices and policies are not understood or they're diluted to the point of missing the key takeaways. Short-term learning approaches like initial certification programs will not work by themselves without recurring training. What does this lead to as ramifications? A poll conducted by Police One and Lexapol in 2022 indicated that only 22% of the respondents had conducted incident command training in the past 12 months. Combine that with the lack of engaging training, stove-piped approaches, or the amount of time and budget required for training, and we are seeing that we are not focused enough on leadership recurring training. We need to do more so that our community leaders are better trained and prepared for critical decision-making for an incident. When an incident occurs that is perceived by the public as being poorly handled, it leads to community resiliency and trust issues that have substantial impacts for everyone. We are witnessing the larger impacts of this play out across the country. Up note, the Las Vegas Route 91 active shooter event from October of 2017 is to date the largest active shooter civil suit at over $750 million. However, Uvalde victims have filed a lawsuit for over $27 billion. Additionally, CRLT pays attention to what we call the command and staff friction points, those things that are pitfalls for an organization in any emergency situation. Regardless of whether you are a combat unit, law enforcement department, or a business, these are the same stressors identified through most lesson learned processes after an incident has occurred. CRLT also believes any community leader will also have to understand these dynamics so that they can create a better emergency action plan and coordinate and support the first responders if an event occurs on their property. As a training philosophy, we can reduce the amount of knowledge lost by revisiting the information several times. Older studies indicate that five repetitions of knowledge significantly reduces memory loss and lessens the impact of the forgetting curve. What CRLT has adapted from this is the need to incorporate recurring training or just enough frequency of readdressing training objectives along with visual learning to aid in leader recall and assist in problem solving skills. This is called the complex adaptive method. We allow the trainee to go through the same type of scenario with the same objectives but increase the complexity of the challenge to allow for progression of concepts based on the learning curve of the user. Within technology, we can create condition-based filters that vary the complexity of training to support a beginner as well as the subject matter experts. Beyond general problem-solving skills that will aid leaders regardless of the situation, there are specific outcomes that should be tied to incident management training. Within incident management, we are focusing on the ones you see in blue a vulnerability assessment to identify weaknesses or gaps in the plan, an emergency action plan that evolves, 
the vulnerability assessment and plan used to influence the training strategy and scheduling for the organization. The need to integrate the community to become familiar with the plan, gaps, resource issues, and challenges that might occur that still need to be addressed, and a continuous after action review and evaluation process that should drive us back to the beginning for the next evolution. We focus on problem solving, and we believe that a tabletop format is uniquely designed to support that, particularly for incident management. But there are detractors. You have to ensure that best practices can be identified and applied to training iterations. You need to ensure there is a record of the activity. They can consume an action officer's time in developing something complex that may only be used once. And let's be honest, tabletops can sometimes be pretty boring. They also cost a lot of money, anywhere from $5,000 to $60,000 to millions of dollars for one event that lasts only a weekend or a week. CRLT's mission is to automate a tabletop process as much as possible to ensure the goodness of the training is not lost because of these detractors. Why a tabletop? Because it allows participants to focus on consequence management. It also allows for participants to concentrate on the orders of impact to their decision making. Those are often called the first, second, and third order impacts. The chess analogy is excellent because it is similar to a tabletop where leaders must think several turns down the road in terms of what later ramifications their decisions may have. CRLT's solution is designed to address as much of what I've spoken of so far, from the steep learning and forgetting curves to consequence management using video game technology that allows us to automate as much of a tabletop function as possible while making it easy to set up and use. What would take a planner months to do in preparing for a tabletop can be accomplished in very little time, often in just minutes. This solution allows training to be conducted at the organization so that there can be more frequent professional development. A primary consideration for what we are doing is ensuring a learning management system is tied to the simulation experience. This is done through the use of data hooks that store locally information and tie it to event triggers that may occur during the simulation experience. This allows for a scientific approach to analysis of knowledge retention and performance at both the individual and organizational level. For CRLT, the backbone is certainly the simulation experience, but we say the learning management system is an umbrella concept that fully supports the scenario-based training. The learning management supports both a pre-scenario training stage that includes links to national references, a test generator, and an optional pre-test, as well as post-scenario stage that includes facilitated after-action review, recorded replay systems, post-test, and a self-assessment tool. What are the benefits to using CRLT simulation? First, save lives. We help customers to save lives through an engaging tabletop simulation focused on critical decision making during an incident, like an active shooter event. Inclusive solution for all involved parties. Our solution helps increase communication across multiple agencies, departments, schools, and businesses to ensure greater asset integration and synchronization thereby establishing a more efficient response, reduce liability and track compliance. Our simulation will also help with increasing leadership knowledge and training oriented on national level policies and standards like the incident command system, assisting with leadership professional development. Increase your brand awareness and increase your reputation. As a part of a community outreach program, the incident simulation also allows subordinates to increase security awareness throughout the community garnering even more trust and increasing the organization's reputation while also ensuring a more resilient community. Best cost. The simulation is also highly portable and affordable. A subscription can be used by as many users and as many times per year as desired. The simulation is designed primarily for incident management training that presents challenges to force a focus on potential command and staff friction points. Frequently, lessons learned derived from this level include better understanding of the common operating picture task organization, asset staging, traffic control, information flow, and family reunification. But this sim is also designed for foundational training for individual skills. Through modular lesson plans that focus on limited training objectives with limited time available, we can orient new trainees with material they are unfamiliar with. We have created specific modules for teachers on how to do a classroom lockdown, including an embedded quiz. We have also created one for school boards to understand the processes associated with family reunification. 
we have also established several scenarios to jump right into complex situations like a school resource officer or private security officer with a suspect in custody, numerous casualties, arriving law enforcement, and fire and rescue that are designed to go right into a hasty problem solving step. And at the other end of the spectrum, we want this to be an engaging and thought provoking way to support community outreach through multi-agency response without being in your face type of shock training that is not supportive of long-term proficiency training for non-responders. Our core features include the use of specific data tables that we created from all of our references. Our AI are driven by a perception tree that is tied to these data tables. Anytime you make a decision, the threat and the civilian AI react to your input based on real world statistical probability of outcomes from everything from the FBI active shooter bulletin, secret service threat assessments, faith-based security network case studies, or the American College of Surgeons study on the mass casualties from gun violence in the US, just to name a few. We want this to be engaging while remaining statistically accurate. We have a patent pending replication of thousands of individual AI, each with their own unique first and last name, history of what occurred, even their own emotional status. Most solutions are hindered based on the ability to render the number of AI characters needed to fully appreciate the scale of a scenario. In the virtual reality realm, this cap would be somewhere around 35. In traditional gaming engines, this number would be around 200 to 250 artificial intelligence characters. Unreal Engine came out recently with version 5.0 that includes mass AI that can replicate thousands of individual actors. However, it does not yet work with multi-participant or remote cloud-based applications. CRLT has successfully tested over 8,000 characters in a single participant scenario and over 5,000 in a multi-participant scenario. You can conduct training by yourself, continually saving your progress, and coming back to a specific scenario based on the time you have available. Or you can set up and run a joint exercise with up to 20 workstations. CRLT is also one of the first to successfully test this as both a download software version or cloud-based with no download required. We have tested this in user groups and computer labs connected via ethernet cables, as well as fully remote over VPN across four different cities with 10 users, controlling over 70 responders at a school with close to 1,000 students and teachers. And we are currently using an internal server for trial demos where no download is required. The learning management system includes over 550 multiple choice questions derived from national references and the I Love You Guys Foundation's work on standard response protocols like a lockdown or evacuate, as well as the reunification method. These questions are categorized into seven core knowledge areas. The test generator seeks to evenly spread 20 questions across those knowledge areas. We have baseline environments that include a middle school and a non-denominational church but we also develop two scale environments as custom levels for particular clients. We have a fully fleshed out dispatch system that allows you to establish your own preferred voice channels. We have a Google Maps plugin that randomly establishes start points for resource locations throughout a community and then maps a route to the scene based on live traffic updates. This is important in understanding that the complexity of incident command will continue to grow even as the tactical fight begins to diminish forcing proper delegation to subordinate units and good task organization. There is also an embedded checklist for incident command considerations from start to finish of an event. This includes an expandable area for an AI advisor that provides dialogue on considerations for each of the tasks. Let's say you want to take a test on the lockdown procedures. You take the pretest and score a 12 out of 20. In the pretest, your results will only show your score and not which questions you got wrong or what the correct answers are. You can then go into the simulation and conduct training. And if you trigger an event that is linked to the learning management system's questions, the sim will timestamp that, collect relevant data, and include it for visual reference within the replay system. This helps with immersion and linking your learning to your training experiences through visual stimulation. You then go to the post-test to see if you learned anything that helps you with the questions you got wrong. You will then be able to analyze your pre and post-test scores and review the correct information. Finally, you will be able to assess your potential knowledge or performance abilities compared to those same core knowledge areas. You can see the color-coded timestamps on the scrub line at the bottom along with the event trigger and the correct answer for something within your tested material. Here's a screenshot of the self-assessment tool where the core knowledge areas of your learning management material are linked to either individual or leader tasks. 
and pretty much anything we do within the sim is or can be linked to a data hook. This data is stored per user experience on the local drive. It can then be exported for analysis. CRLT is capable of providing significant customization to support major venues and crowd control. We were also in significant discussions last year with the federal government on mass casualties, hazardous materials, chemical, biological, radiological, nuclear, and explosive incidents, and natural disaster support. Additionally, we realized that a tabletop is not all inclusive. There are some things like individual judgment, action, reaction times, muscle memory drills, use of force and de-escalation training that are likely better supported through real-time augmented or virtual reality platforms. CRLT is the first to demonstrate a cross-platform capability. You can conduct first-person virtual reality training in the same scenarios that your leaders are working on for a tabletop scenario. Thank you for watching our first product overview feature video that describes why CRLT created our solution and how we developed unique features designed to support our community leaders in critical problem solving skills for incident command and incident management. For a deeper look at how to use the simulation, we encourage you to watch the next video, CRLT's The Incident Use Case.